Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising 144K, I'm Hydrogen Man. So guys, I just wanted to share this kind of interesting information about how hydrogen is dispersing throughout the body. They're really doing this to try and understand the mechanisms of how hydrogen is really working. Me personally, I use this information to figure out a better protocol for me to use whenever it is that I'm trying to use hydrogen for certain benefits. Obviously, I'm not going to give you guys any medical advice or anything on this video. I'm just sharing with you guys some of the science and some of the stuff I'm seeing here. You can see this was published here in February of 2019, so not very long ago. Again, you can see that the scientists are Japanese gentlemen here. And this study, obviously, as it states, hydrogen gas distribution in organs after inhalation. Real-time monitoring of tissue hydrogen concentration in rat. So here's ultimately one of the i don't want to say one of the issues but one of the things that i'm noticing is that this is actually being done with just inhalation of the hydrogen gas i would be very curious the differences between the results of inhalation versus something like hydrogen water and also how you would apply the hydrogen water whether you're doing it on empty stomach doing it with food in your stomach and i believe that all these things will make a difference but let's just go ahead and start and just look at the abstract here hydrogen has therapeutic and preventive effects against various diseases. Although animal and clinical studies have reported promising results, hydrogen distribution in organs after administration remains unclear. Well, guys, I say that it remains unclear because basically they've had times where they show high concentrations in the spleen and the pancreas, and then other times they show high concentrations more like in the liver, for example. And so that's one of the reasons that they're just not completely clear on how this all works. And that just has to do with the way that they're doing the tests. And this one is supposed to be kind of the latest and greatest uh, test that they've done up to date. Um, this is one of the parts that I found very intriguing. The hydrogen concentration was measured. Okay, here's the areas. The brain, liver, kidney, mesentery, fat, and thigh muscles of rats. The maximum concentration, time of saturation, and other measurements representing the dynamics and distribution were obtained from the uh, concentration curves and the results obtained for different organs were compared. So let me just show you the things that I'm finding, you know, particularly interesting. These results provide the fundamentals for, basically they're trying to find out the mechanisms right here. I'm trying to find out the underlying mechanisms um, that hydrogen gas has on mammalian systems. But again, I think this is going to help us understand how to use hydrogen uh, more effectively because of the way, I mean, we already see in science that usually the water works better than the inhalation typically. But I think it just depends on, you know, what part of the body you're trying to target and, and other things also, which I won't go necessarily into here. But let's just kind of read a little bit of the introduction. Molecular hydrogen has emerged as an attractive medicinal agent due to its therapeutic and preventive effects on various diseases. Several studies on animals have shown that the hydrogen reduces the re basically ROS, reactive oxygen species, in tissues and has other antioxidant and or anti-inflammatory effects, blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. I don't want to read the whole thing for you. So here, I'll just kind of go into uh, some of the things that I found interesting in this study. They do say, although hydrogen is produced in the intestinal microbiota, uh, via fermentation of sugars and blah, blah, blah. So even though that, that we create hydrogen in our body, I think they're trying to understand why is it that when you artificially administer hydrogen, it provides favorable therapeutic effects. They say it remains unclear. Me personally, I think I already know why, but I'm just gonna let you know science take its course and eventually figure it out. Now, granted, I don't think it necessarily matters. You see that it works, that's the important part, but if we wanna understand how it works later on in the future, I'm sure that they'll be uh, figuring that out. So let's see here, obviously, despite such promising data and increasing popularity, you know, studies investigating hydrogen gas distribution or dynamics in organs after administra in administration are generally lacking. Um, again, in this particular study, they're doing just the inhalation. Let's just kind of get to the real meat of the matter let me just kind of skip forward here. Um, definition of hydrogen concentration measurements. No, I don't think I need to hear the definitions. We're basically, they're looking for basically uh, full saturation here. The amount of time that it takes to saturate it by 10%, 63%, 90%. And this figure is not necessarily the most interesting one to me. Let me show you the ones that I found interesting here. Maximum concentration of hydrogen. This is really cool, guys. Check this out. So what we're looking at here is the kidneys, so the amount of hydrogen, and then you can see um, 
let's see, here is the kidneys, here is the muscles, mesentery, the brain, and the liver. You can see that the highest levels, so they found more hydrogen in the liver, even when the amount of hydrogen that they were giving, the concentrations or the amounts that were being administered were actually lower than the levels they were finding. They were finding higher levels in the liver, which in their mind indicated that hydrogen is getting stored in the liver. I personally agree with that. I do think that the liver is storing hydrogen. And, you know, you got to remember, the liver has so many functions, guys. I believe it's like over 500 functions. So the fact that it's storing it up and using it, I believe it's probably using it in certain processes, which is one of the reasons that hydrogen just does funny things that they just don't understand. Um, they were using hydrogen gas inhalation, which in my mind is the reason that the brain got these high levels also because it was going straight to the brain. If I was using hydrogen gas, again, it's not medical advice, but if I was doing it, I would, and I wanted it for the benefits of the brain. I did a video on, on uh, Parkinson's and I did a video on dementia and Alzheimer's. Check those out if you haven't seen them. This is exactly what I would do. I'd be wanting to inhale it, but I would be using the water also. I have a sp very specific way that I've been using hydrogen that I find works really well. What I don't understand is why they didn't do both. Why did they did not do the water and also do the inhalation? But if you did the water, again, you'd have to do it very specifically, in my opinion, um, from making it properly, uh, making sure you're making really good nano bubbles. All these things, in my opinion, are really going to have an effect and kind of sway the results or give you basically different results. So I find this very interesting. They don't know exactly why it disperses. Sometimes they think it has to do with blood flow. Um, sometimes it could just be the dispersion of the gas. Um, I think it's also very interesting the way that it gets to all these organs as compared if you were making it in the gut. This is why I try to do basically all the different things. I like to do the inhalation. I like to do the water. And I like to do also eating certain foods that will help my body create its all hydrogen also. So you found the lowest levels in the kidneys. This is the reason that if I had kidney issues, I would use hydrogen differently as compared if I had liver issues. And there's been, <coughs> excuse me, very interesting science about what it does for the liver, kidneys also. Um, but all this again is incredibly interesting. Here they talk about the distribution of the hydrogen and the dynamics of the saturation. Um, very interesting though, I would go to the this figure. I think this figure explains it better. So what you're looking at here, guys, is a time in minutes. So see, you got one minute, two minutes. And so if you look at the liver, when they start inhaling the hydrogen gas, you're saying it's about 3%, you're reaching your peak roughly around the eight minute mark. So between five and eight minutes, and then it kind of tapers off. And then look at the brain, very similar, but you have little lower levels, but it goes, spikes up real, real fast. Again, right around, well, I would say around the four or five minute mark, right around here. Again, you're inhaling it, so you're going straight. In fact, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm inhaling some hydrogen right now and going straight to my brain, right? All right, let's see here. Then you have the mesentery right here. This one's uh, took a little longer to peak out, probably around here, eight again, nine, maybe 10 minute mark. You can see the lower concentrations here uh, for the kidneys. It went up relatively quick, right here on the four, maybe five minute mark, but then it kind of tapered off, which again, this information to me gives me clues on how I want to use hydrogen if I'm trying to target certain organs. And again, just me, my personal protocols. The muscles were interesting because look at this. It was so gradual. Very interesting. Maybe not a lot of blood in the muscles. But if you want to target the muscle, maybe you can do certain things to bring blood flow into the muscle. Maybe inhaling hydrogen and then uh, doing some exercises for those targeted muscles or maybe target doing the exercises first and then doing the hydrogen gas inhalation. So again, this is a really interesting graph to me. They did talk a little bit about the thigh muscle. Uh, the hydrogen concentrations uh, increased more gradually in the thigh muscle. And they think a lot of it had to do actually with um, the type of anesthesia that they were using because obviously this little guy was not moving. If you're not moving, you're not bringing a lot of you know stuff into that thigh, a lot of blood or whatnot. Um, again, this is the amount of time that it took for reaching the saturation levels. So you can see the brain was rather quickly and the liver was rather quickly. Um, you can see the muscles took longer to get that hydrogen in there at the full saturation levels. And you can see the that's probably one of the benefits, at least for the kidneys, is you may not get the highest levels, but it, it did it at a re re uh, relatively fast time. So that's kind of cool and interesting. 
I personally think that these results would also change. I, I, I won't go into the detail about what my opinions are, but I believe I know how I would be able to change these things and the results in a very kind of unique way that I believe in the future as I get more involved with this. I'm going to try to give some of my feedback to scientists so they can carry out some of these uh, tests a little differently. Um, the desaturation dynamics was interesting because, again, the desaturation uh, of how the hydrogen would leave, it seemed to leave slower, more slowly out of the muscles. So that's something interesting. It almost like lingered in there longer um, than the other one, than the other organs. So I found that relatively interesting. And that may play a difference uh, if you're using water or the hydrogen gas inhalation, possibly. We're going to have to wait and see. They were using about a 3%, you know, uh, hydrogen gas, again, inhalation there for, for this particular test. And uh, I think that was pretty much about it as far as what I found interesting. I just found it very interesting uh, how it affected uh, all these different organs and how it kind of was stumping scientists because it didn't just, it, hydrogen seems to just take its own path. Here's where you can see they talked about the anesthesia and how they believe it might have affected uh, the particular blood flow in the muscles because, you know, you're, you're not really moving. And so I also found that, you know, rather interesting. Um, and yeah, I believe that's about it. I just found this study particularly interesting. I thought that you guys might also find it interesting. And uh, maybe I'll try to put a link below if you guys want to read through all this. There is a lot of information here. I just wanted to touch on the fact of how hydrogen seems to go into different organs in different ways and how it appears to be stored possibly in the liver, which I find very, very interesting considering the amount of functions that the liver has and how important of an organ it is and just how possibly uh, the diffusion or the spread of the hydrogen is different, possibly whether it's the blood flow, whether it's gas diffusion, and how it ultimately seems to go in all these different parts of the body, and they're not exactly sure why it goes into one place faster or why it stays in, in another place longer. Again, all very, very interesting, and I actually think that these things could be enhanced, but, you know, that would be probably there. If you guys want to hear some of my hydrogen theory, let me know. I can, I can share some of my opinions on all that. If you guys just want to see the science, then I can just stick to that. Uh, right here again, liver. It's the highest levels of hydrogen were found in the liver. I don't know if you guys find that interesting, but I find it very interesting that it can actually store the hydrogen. Um, obviously, our body's under pressure, so maybe the amount of pressure inside the liver allows it to be able to do that. Um, here you can see that they're actually going to be doing another randomized uh, double-blind uh, study here using 2%. Uh, hydrogen gas and that's currently ongoing and you know as long as it's less than four percent it's safe like the device I use is two percent also which is a good and very safe number you know for for your home so you don't have to worry about anything crazy going on where it would be a uh, kind of um, uh, maybe possibly dangerous uh, let's see here what else might we see here um, obviously there's really no negative effects to hydrogen if made properly and used properly because that's obviously been a big topic on my particular videos learning more and more about that and that's about it guys um, just wanted to share again this with you guys I hope you found it interesting and helpful uh, don't forget to share don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button but definitely try to share because again as you guys know a lot of people are not able to see my videos or even find them and so I think a lot of people will find this data very, very interesting and intriguing on how the body seems to use hydrogen. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys next time on the next.